Hello, this is Dan, the Furniture Repairman. Today we're going to show you how we used a spray chrome product from SM Arnold to restore this chrome chair base. Now it's very pitted and rusted and we couldn't get it in a chrome tank because of the way it's put together. So we had to go a different route. Now the spray chrome isn't perfect, but it does give you a much better look and something that would be acceptable on many pieces and affordable on just about all of them. Now you're seeing the after pick here, and then we're going to show you the products we used and how we got there. On the left, you see a general purpose metal primer, very common product. You can pick it up at any automotive supply house. On the right, you see SM Arnold Spray Chrome. We're going to put a link to where we got it. We purchased it right from Amazon, very available. It's a lacquer based product and we were very happy with its performance. Now here's our piece. We've already taken and sanded off all of the rust from the chrome. Now we're going to wipe it down with acetone and make sure it's clean. The acetone wipe is very important because if there's any oils, any residue, anything stuck to that base, that's an old base, then the primer isn't really going to stick well to it and you may end up having it peel and then if the primer peels then what's going to happen is the chrome spray is going to peel so here I am wiping it down and now what I'm going to do is just lift this little neck piece right here and I'm going to tape it up in the air so that I could spray underneath it as I spray it so that's kind of prepped and I'm just kind of cleaning off the last of the acetone right here Okay, I've got my primer. I'm making sure I shake it up, shake it up, and keep shaking it up. And then I'm going to show you whenever I paint or spray or varnish anything, I start with it upside down and inside out. That's the best way to do it. That way you can get these areas done without having to turn it over and mar your good work. So flip it over, and when you spray it, Try to spray from the inside of the piece to the outside. And we're going to spin this as we spray it. And we're going to start out a little farther away as I spray. That way I don't end up with too much of a coverage at first. Now you see me testing my spray. Now I'm in my spray booth and I've got a fan on. So I've got to be a little closer than if I was outside. But I'm kind of going with short bursts. And I'm getting a good feel for the way the primer lays down. Okay. If I'm going to make a mistake and make runs, I want it to be on this part. So this is where I learn. This is where I learn how the can's going to spray and how it's going to lay down and how the piece is going to react. Every piece is different and every rattle can's a little bit different also. Okay, so you see on my can, I got one of those little handles for spray cans. I found that they give you a much better spray. They press down on the button and hold it all the way down and open that valve all the way up. Uh, there are a few bucks and you can get them a lot of different places and they're pretty universal depending on the spray can. I would recommend buying one. Now you're seeing the way I'm going across this. This is what we would call a spit coat. This is a light coat. We don't want it too heavy. We're trying to create an encouraged adhesion between the primer and the piece. Now the job of the primer is two things. The job of the primer is to be sticky. We want it to stick to the piece we're spraying and we want whatever we spray on top of it to stick to the primer. So the primer is soft and it's sticky. The other thing it's supposed to do is block out colors that are underneath. Now, I was going back and forth between using a black primer underneath the chrome and a gray primer underneath the chrome. I talked to a few different car guys. They seemed to think they were happier with the way the gray primer um, worked underneath the chrome spray. So that's kind of the way I went. Now, this is something I'll do. I'll uh, find out if I need to do something. I'll find out somebody who does it, and I'll ask them their, you know, just for their advice. Um, I just kind of say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Can you give me five minutes? Just tell me what's the best way to do it. And this is how I ended up with a great primer. And now I'm going quick. And after it dries, I'm going to sand it. I'm going to sand it smooth, and then I'm going to primer it again a little bit heavier. So I'm going two coats of primer here and I'm gonna to have to let it dry in between. Now there was two pieces in this set. This is the other piece. It's been primered two times and I sanded in between the coats. 
I sanded with a 320 the first time. I sanded with a 400 the second. It's nice and smooth. And now I'm going to apply my chrome coat. And again, upside down and inside out. And I'm going to go quick and light. Another spit coat. This is my first coat. I want to create adhesion between the two different types of products. And the best way to do that is to start out very light and let yourself get a mechanical bond in there. So there's a difference between a chemical bond and a mechanical bond. So I'm going very light. And you can see how shiny it's becoming already. You can see the reflection of the pieces in the chrome spray. I'm very happy with the way it looks. And I'm sure as I build it, I'm going to end up with even deeper and richer chrome. Now I'm working my way around the piece a second time. This is a lacquer based product. So typically with lacquer, you're going to spray your spit coat and then you're going to let it flash is what we call it. Partially start to dry over and you're going to come back and you're going to spray a heavier coat. And as I do this, I can see how the chrome is getting deeper on there. I'm getting better coverage. And I'm trying not to be too heavy. What I don't want to do is create runs. Now, if you create runs, you sand them off and then you, you go again. And a lot of that's going to be just feel for what you're doing. Um, how quickly you're moving the rattle can, how far away your spray is. And then the key is never stop the can. Never let it stop moving. That's your best choice right here. And right now I'm getting a look. And you can see, you can see the reflection of that board right there. And I'm putting my fingers in the picture, and you can see them reflecting back off of that. So that's a pretty good chrome coat. I'm happy with that. Now this is the base. I sanded with 400 between coats. I'm coming back, and I'm going to do another coat. Now with lacquer, you do not need to sand between coats for adhesion. But what I'm doing is I'm sanding off any sort of dust nibs or rough spots that I find on there making sure I've got a nice smooth surface for my next uh, coat. Now this is going to be my second coat and it's going to give me a little bit more shine and it's going to be quick and I'm going to fill it in just spots where I'm looking where I feel like I need it. And you see my can is moving quickly and that's what I found with this product is it's a great product. There's a ton of material that's going to come out of it and if you pause or you hesitate it's going to build and drip and run on you. So keep that rattle can moving. And I like to shoot with it close to the piece because it's a tiny little narrow piece and I want to get most of the material on that piece and not in the air around that piece. So if you're going to shoot close, then you got to move quick. If you can't move quick, you got to back the can off and you got to shoot more from a distance and you got to go more spray on there to build it, but then you can go slower. And right now you can see how it's starting to reflect the boards as we turn it and we're getting a deeper deeper reflection now i'm calling this my second coat but i'm going over each piece more or each part of the piece more than one time so it's the second time between sandings in the spray booth you can see me i'm constantly shaking that can one of the reasons why is there's a lot of solids in this material and i want to make sure i keep them floating around and coming out evenly and i'm going to keep spinning and spraying not too much at a time and I'm going to build very slowly but as I build you could see that is getting more and more like a beautiful chrome job now it's never going to be as good as true chrome there's no way we're going to achieve that out of a rattle can but this looks pretty damn good I'm awfully proud of the way this is looking right here so compared to where we started we have something that when we put it on our piece is going to be much much better than if we hadn't done anything at all and right here i'm showing you can see the reflections of the boards and it kind of has a little bit of a brush steel look but you can see my fingers reflecting in that right there and i think it depends on where you're going to use this product but it definitely has a place on a lot of pieces and it definitely has an affordability for a lot of pieces and it's something you can do at home so here's our final result both pieces side by side you can see they look very good this product can be used on a lot of applications i have used it on wood uh, that's one of the things that's up and coming now is furniture painted silver uh, you can definitely use it on knobs things like that 
And as you can see here, this is the chairs and the ottoman that we put it on. And this is the final product. This is a Plycraft lounge chair. And you could see these bases, they came in rusted. And now they look excellent. So they fit right along with that chair that's been restored. Thanks so much for watching. If you remember to subscribe, like, all that good stuff, we'd appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, put them in the section below. I will definitely try to answer them. If you want to see a video on a particular type of repair, put it in the comment section and I'll see uh, if I can do one for you. Y'all have a good day now.